Rusty Quill presents Chapter and Multiverse Do take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. I have a rather different tale for you today, if you're so inclined. It concerns a group of vampiric creatures I encountered during my time in a particular iteration of the so-called Wild West. Whether they were heroes or the villains of this story, well, that's up to you to decide. Hello and welcome to Chapter and Multiverse, the actual play podcast where we explore the same city across multiple parallel universes. I am your game master, Maddie Searle, pronouns she, her, and today we will be playing a one-shot of Vampire Cowboys, a game of my design which is a hack of lasers and feelings with a little sprinkle of Dead Channel by Grant Howitt in there as well. And lasers and feelings obviously written by John Harper, creator of many amazing TTRPGs. But before we go any further, I must introduce our wonderful and talented players, starting with Lori. Hello, my name is Lori, as we have already established, and my pronouns are she, her. Wonderful. And Helen. Hi, I'm Helen, and my pronouns are she, he, and they. And Maddie, I did not realise until looking at the PDF that you wrote this. You wrote Neither Vampire did I. Cowboys. And you said it out loud. I was like, what? <laughs> Super <laughs> cool. Very, look at the modesty, cool. look at that little grin. Yeah. <laughs> That's the grin of the cool. <laughs> oh, shucks. And Lid. My name is Lydia. Uh, my pronouns are they or she. And I'm very impressed with Maddie. That's my character <laughs> trait right now. Thank you very much. And Ben. Hello, I'm Ben Meredith. Uh, pronouns he, him. Wonderful. All right. Now uh, it is time to create our characters. You have to choose a style, a role, a number and a name for your character. And you also get to choose a character goal as well. So let's uh, just go in the same order that we did for the intros and Lowry. Well, there's seven of them, so you can't roll a d6 for these, but that's how Liz and Felix did it, so blame John Harper. But yeah, you can either choose or roll to figure out which one you want. I got number one. Oh, so you are rugged. So I am rugged and I'm really pleased about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what roll uh, do you want? Roll? I'm going to roll from a roll. Four! What am I? So you are a train robber. <gasps> oh, I'm so cool. I'm a rugged That's train so cool. robber. That's very cool. <laughs> All right. And you can choose your number from between two to five. So a high number means that you're better at being a vampire. So that's kind of cold mm. rationality and subterfuge, manipulation, supernatural powers, all that kind of stuff. And if you've got a low number, you're better at being a cowboy, which is all about passion and riding horses and shooting things and oh um, keeping in touch with your human side. So do you want to be more vampiric or more cowboy or kind of slap bang in the middle? Two is the lowest you can choose and five is the highest you can choose. I, I can't. I've got to let the dice decide. Like, I am absolutely paralysed. <laughs> two. Two. I am so human. <laughs> <laughs> the most cowboyest cowboy that ever boyed. That ever um, cowboyed. I feel a bit <laughs> sick at the sight of blood. <laughs> uh, yes, please, please, <laughs> oh, please. That is an excellent trait for a rugged yeah, trainer. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> and what name do you want to give your character? The hardest part. Choo choo. <laughs> strong start. <laughs> what was that? Yes! Strong start. I just thought what I said. Oh, it's strong start. Actually, I quite like that. Can that be my surname? Choo choo strong start. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Incredible. That's so good. That's so good. Because you're a train robber. <laughs> that's very like you rose from the dead and were like, I think I vaguely remember what I used to be as a human. Like, like there was a sound I can remember. <laughs> I'm optimistic about this new afterlife. <laughs> I think it's going to be a strong start. <laughs> yeah. This is wonderful. And what's your character goal? So you can choose one from the list or come up with one on the fly. <laughs> It's mm. one that's train. <laughs> <Robert> train. <laughs> if you Don't roll, you might not get that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
Oh, I like the one the character goal is just yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> That does imply the existence of the character goal. Blur! <laughs> I mean, I think maybe my goal could be to drink blood because I'm like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes! Yeah, my goal is to drink blood. I love that. <laughs> Even though you faint at the sight. <laughs> what, what drama? <laughs> I'm going to be really helpful. <laughs> this is going to be amazing. I love it. I love your character already. Named well, strong start. Yeah. Strong start. <laughs> okay. What pronouns does your character have? It's she, her. Awesome. Helen, what style do you want for your character? Three. I am ancient. Ancient. Ooh. Mysterious. <laughs> Oh, am I going to play a real grumpy old man? <laughs> <laughs> and what role do you want? You can, yeah, you can roll or you can choose. I'm going to roll for everything. I like It worked out really well for Lowry. I'm going to go did. with mine. <laughs> that is another three. A prospector. Ooh. Yeah. What, what does a prospector do? Um, Prospects. Looks for gold. <laughs> yeah, looks for gold. <laughs> Valuable metals. <laughs> The yeah. look that I got off of Helen. Oh no, I'm going to be a capitalist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, maybe you want to do something different with the gold. I want to redistribute it. I want to dig it up and I want to give it away. Yeah, you should be an yeah. anarchist prospector. I'm going to yeah. find all the gold and I'm just going to blow it up. <laughs> no gold for anyone. <laughs> yeah, and you can choose your number um, from two to five. Low being cowboy and high being vampire. Uh, I rolled a d6 and got a 6, so I guess that means I'm a 5, so I am... <laughs> Super vampire That makes sense. You're ancient. You're so vampire True. Yeah. yeah. True. I am the vampire granddaddy. Hey, look, it might be, right, you don't need to be prospecting for gold. Maybe you're prospecting for something much more occult. <laughs> My brain immediately went, prospecting for friendship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the darkest magic of all, friendship. <laughs> Friendship is dark magic. <laughs> <laughs> what name do you want to give your ancient prospector, Helen? Squishy Chewing. What? Squishy Chewing? Yeah, I I have a document where like people say phrases that I think would make good names. Squishy <laughs> Chewing. <laughs> So hang on, is this like is this like a, a whole thing mononym, or are you like first name Squishy, last name Chewing? Yeah. First name Squishy, last name okay. Chewing. Okay. My name is Squishy and I'm here to say I'm going to rap in a vampiric way. I like to find way. gold in every way. Hey, we're vampire cowboys. Yeah. <laughs> it's the wild, wild what west I, after all. What if I'm such an ancient vampire, I've got dentures and that's where my name comes from. Oh, no. <laughs> oh that's so visceral. <laughs> Uh, what are Squishy Chewing's pronouns? A squishy Chewing uh, <laughs> is God. they, them. And also, what is your um, your character's goal? Should I just pick the last? Yeehaw! <laughs> 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 My character goal is to yeehaw! <laughs> is, it, is it because you're so vampiric that you're, you're trying to learn the ways of the cowboy? Yes. Because you think they're cool. <gasps> yeah! They don't come easily. <laughs> Have we just, like discovered you and you're like cow who <laughs> cow what this is you see you see like choo choo strong start wandering around like that is who i want to be <laughs> yes teach me cowboy stuff lydia how about you what's your style for your character oh charming charming we like oh. that oh all again Oh, I'm a charming gunslinger. Wow. Oh. Hey, how do you like holiday. these guns? <laughs> <laughs> so I am five. I'm very vampiric. Aw. Nice. And uh, what name do you want your character to have? Gunbo Baggins. <laughs> oh, yes. Gunbo Baggins. There you go. <laughs> ben looks like he's in more and more pain with every name. He's going to be something called Steve Smith. You know? No, because if, if, if Gumbo Baggins is a, is a gunslinger, like what is Bilbo Baggins? <laughs> like a duck? No, he's just he's always got the receipt. Oh, the billboards! No, he's, he's just one of the people who like swings the yeah. billboards on the road. <laughs> <laughs> what are Gumbo Baggins' pronouns? Uh, Gumbo is definitely a he/him. A strong masculine name. Um, <laughs> Gumbo. Gumbo. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think that you should. Take a look at my guns. 
<laughs> Do you shoot around here often? <laughs> pow, pow. Pow, pow. <laughs> pow, chicka, wow, wow. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> what is Gumbo's character goal? Ooh, prove your prowess. Oh, he's insecure. Oh, that doesn't seem right. I don't like that. I'm going to re-roll. Not for someone called Gumbo. No. <laughs> Shoot enemies was what I wrote. That was definitely, re-rolling was the right choice. Yes. <laughs> My name is Gumbo and I know what I'm here to do. <laughs> Chat you up and shoot enemies. And I'm all out of all out of chat up lines <laughs> <laughs> all right so ben what style and role do you want for your character okay i am reckless and a preacher i'm a reckless preacher oh god take any cause <laughs> yeah. who, who yeah. are you a preacher of like it's not it, very much you could be reckless it could be a very bad cthulhu-esque <laughs> i think we'll find that out in play Interesting. Mm, yeah. Mm, mysterious. Tr- trains. It's, it's trains. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> it might. It might be. Um, so please choose a number from two to five. Okay. I am three vampire. Midlin. Yeah. Sweet. And what name does your character have? Uh, Cigar Lionel. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> and I'm always chomping on a cigar. Nice. I really like the idea that you haven't actually realised that humans smoke these. Yeah. <laughs> just eating them. Yeah. <laughs> and what are Cigar Lionel's pronouns? He, him. Sweet. And my goal is drink blood. Oh, nice. And now I believe uh, you get to create your camp. So as a group, you get to pick two strengths for your camp out of the, the list including well-hidden, defensible magic herbs, boat access, neutral town nearby, ley lines, and the horse paddock. And you also have to pick one problem, either angry bears, contested territory, pathetic fallacy, or gold rush. Seven. So, horse paddock. All right, so second strength. Do you want to go for something that complements horse paddock? Or do you want to do something random? What would actually, like a sommelier, what would you recommend? What complements horse paddock? I think since a horse paddock is very cowboy, maybe you want to go for something more vampire y for the mm. second one. I'd I, like ley lines. Cool. I like ley lines. Yeah. The only reason that I like the idea of magic herbs is that the horses are also there and so they keep eating <laughs> magic herbs and That's having very good. strange effects or just yeah. getting confused. That would be fun. That's cool. also good because, yeah, horse paddock plus magic herbs equals magic horses. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done with that. I've just added compliments horse paddock to my list of character names. Um, so <laughs> we'll wait a couple of six months and that, that'll turn up <laughs> what's the problem that your camp has so angry bears pretty self-explanatory contested territory someone else uh, lays claim to the land pathetic fallacy it's almost always bad weather or gold rush people keep coming by looking for gold at inopportune moments i'm quite drawn to gold rush same i just really like the idea of people coming by like Really bad moments, really high tension moments. It's like, yeah. oh, just uh, for the river. <laughs> Don't mind me. Uh, seen any gold round? Here? <laughs> just, while we're while we're at like some terribly deep and traumatic point, just the tick tick of the pickaxe. Yeah. <laughs> do you mind? <laughs> Another thing that we can do in this game is create NPCs to populate your camp. So I would like each of you to come up with an NPC name and a distinguishing feature. So the example that I've given in the game is Kathleen McKenna has the biggest hat you ever did see. (laughs) But you may choose whatever you want. So Lowry, uh, what NPC uh, do you think would be hanging around the camp? Pickaxe Patricia. (laughs) (laughs) Wonderful. They ironically have a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> She's always got a deck of cards. No, they, sorry, I'd like their pronouns to be they, them. They've always got a deck of cards. Sweet, deck of cards. Okay, and Helen, how about your NPC? Uh, my NPC is called Compliments Horse Paddock. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Gets very confusing around camp. I'm looking for Horse Paddock. No, de- come on. Okay. Oh, gosh. <laughs> She's just the nicest person. Oh. She's just really nice. Liz, what NPC do you want? Professor Hadragogan. <laughs> he is looking for fossils. He's not a real professor. Oh. oh no. 
Is he really looking for fossils? <laughs> I don't know. What does he define as fossils? I found this fossilised bank vault. Let's go. <laughs> That's brilliant, yeah. Uh, he has never spelt his name the same way twice. Oh, I was excellent. about to ask how that's spelt. <laughs> Sweet. All right, and Ben, what's your NPC? Stringfellow Dandy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Incredible. Uh, uh, he is ancient, but in a human way, and is always playing the fiddle. He's always a fiddling. Nope, I very explicitly <laughs> didn't phrase it like that. <laughs> oh my he plays God. the violin. I don't, actually, I don't know. You tell me. Laura, you explain to me in very like minute detail mm. why I didn't do that. Oh, I genuinely have no idea, so I couldn't possibly. <laughs> now we have all our characters prepped and ready. Why don't we take a short break and we'll be right back in a few minutes. And welcome back. And uh, now we jump into the story of four vampire cowboys in the state of Wyoming in the year 1898. You are staying at your camp, which is on the outskirts of a small town called Chapter, which has only been in existence for a couple of years. And you are currently sitting around your campfire. The moon is full and high in the sky and the wind is whispering through the trees you have a selection of tents and wagons and lean-tos which act as your sleeping quarters. And uh, your horses are, are tied up in their little paddock off to the side with their, their eyes kind of looking a bit glassy <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. You have just completed a successful train robbery as a gang. Woo! And so you are having a little bit of a celebration. Um, you held up uh, a number of the wealthiest passengers of the train and looted a few lockboxes. And so you've got a bunch of jewellery, pocket watches and cold hard cash. So how are you celebrating in your camp? Here's a question. What are what flavour of vampiric rules are we labouring under? Can we consume food and drink? Or I mean, I'm assuming we have to be out at night, which is why we're sort of the moon is high. Yes. Well, essentially, you can kind of pick and mix the vampire lore that works best for you, and it could be that different aspects of vampire lore affect you in different ways, depending on your lineage. But yeah, it is entirely up to you. Juju would really, really like to be able to consume something that isn't blood, even if it doesn't sustain her. <laughs> <laughs> Chugging on some cider. I reckon we got some nice scotch from the uh, from the train robbery. Yeah, nice. I like the idea that maybe we can eat and drink, but as, as you say, Lori, like, it doesn't actually keep us alive. Mm. It's just nice. Yeah. Just yeah. pleasure. <laughs> yeah. It's like how Spike and Buffy loves the blooming onion. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Pickaxe Patricia is um, dealing some cards and getting a game of poker going and compliments Horse Paddock is just <laughs> complimenting you all on your beautiful new jewellery that you've attained yeah. from the train robbery. She's so nice. Yeah, well, Professor Hadrigrun <laughs> is off in the corner ignoring the celebrations and just kind of digging a, 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 another trench at a very awkward place so yeah it's where the privy is so oh, no. you know that yeah you know that you're like in the night time when you're trying to go you're to the toilet to you're gonna oh. fall into a trench which has absolutely no fossils in it whatsoever <laughs> uh, no and, pleasant ones anyway yeah oh. no pleasant ones <laughs> And Stringfellow Dandy is, of course, playing the fiddle, um, awesome. providing a lovely, a lovely backdrop to this to this evening of celebration. I would like everyone to make a vampire check. If you're using vampire, you want to roll under your number. I rolled a one, and my number is two. Nice, yeah. And also, if you roll exactly your number, then you are a true vampire cowboy and it's basically a crit and you get to ask me as the GM a question and I have to answer truthfully. Oh, nice. Does it have to be about the game? Or just... Uh, yeah, you can just ask me what my favourite colour is if you want. But... <laughs> uh, I rolled a three, so that is a success for me. I rolled a one, so that is a success for me too. Sweet. I rolled a three and since I'm very vampire, that is... A success. We are so successful. Oh my gosh, guys! What a strong start. Yeah, you wait until we start rolling cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you are looking around your camp, kind of taking in the, the wonderful celebrations that are happening, you hear a very obvious, like, someone stepping on a twig and it breaking off in the undergrowth. And you hear a voice go, gosh darn it! 
<laughs> it's another prospector. Do you want to go and investigate? Squishy Chewing is immediately annoyed that something unpredictable is happening. They, they, they like their routine. They're doing their post-robbery routine of smoking a pipe and carefully counting out precisely how much gold we have. So Squishy Chewing goes, ah, who goes there? It's no one, no one around here. Well, that's a strange bush that tells us that it ain't no bush. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to say, I've been going to speak so many times that I just can't commit myself to an American accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've spoken twice and both have been different accents, Larry, so <laughs> it's fine. Hey, you strange bush. How about you talk to me? Hmm? Gumbo isn't smart. He's not, he's not smart, but he is charming canonically, so you're all charmed. Yeah, strange bush, you got anything to say? You can say it to my face. All right, can you give me a cowboy check, please, to see if you <laughs> no! can charm this bush? I roll a two, and that's below, so I guess it's not good. The bush kind of quivers for a moment and then... Oh yeah, I'm used to seeing that happen. <laughs> <laughs> damn it, Gonbo, why do you insist on flirting with every damn bush we ever see? I just like flirting. And how are you doing? <laughs> Same as last time, talking to a bush. Well, it usually goes well for me. Gunbow turns around and looks hopefully at the bush, at the quivering bush. At this point, not one, not two, but five people <laughs> emerge <laughs> from the undergrowth. Gunbow's like, I can count. <laughs> that is more than three. <laughs> And so you can see that there is an African-American couple, who, one of whom uh, is a man and has these kind of tiny little pince-nez glasses on. Um, and the woman has a very authoritative bearing. There's mm -hmm. also a lanky white man who just kind of has a, a goofy expression on his face. He has a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he has a podcast. There's also a Mexican man who looks very nervous to be there and a woman who has a sash of tartan around her clothing who just looks absolutely furious, just constantly furious. <laughs> the African-American woman steps forward and says... All right, we were trying to be stealthy and obviously it didn't work out. So this is very awkward. We were going to snatch away one of you vamps. Uh, let's just be straight up front about it. We are a gang of werewolves. And we have found that there is a cure to lycanthropy. But that does involve draining the blood of a vampire. <coughs> Oh, no, um, well, now, sorry, I'm using my blood. <laughs> I get a I'll... lot of use out of it, cha-ching. Why would you go and tell us something like that? Did you think we were just going to be like, well, fine then, take one of us and drain us dry? I mean, <laughs> could you could you take a little bit from everyone and that counts as a whole draining and, and, and then we could restock and then you could all be cured and, and this problem could be fixed and then we do something else for the other two episodes because this has been solved <laughs> we should not be negotiating with these vampire stealers these thieves of the undead squishy 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 come on squishy <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no negotiation we're just having a talk Squishy waves their walking stick in annoyance and, <laughs> and is like, you have not seen the vampire thieves that I have seen in my life. If they come once, they will come again. Well, to be fair, these ones haven't been that effective, so maybe they won't come back. Well, actually, um, we have another proposition. Kirsty here was very keen on the steal a vampire plan. And she's like, I am right, I was. I was very keen to steal away one of you <laughs> awful <laughs> bloodsuckers. <laughs> I love France. It's a beautiful country. <laughs> <laughs> the, the woman continues. But we do have another proposition. Perhaps you could come with us in a town and find some unsuspecting person and turn them into a vampire and give them over to us. See, we can't turn someone into a vampire. We're werewolves. We turn people into werewolves. But you can. So perhaps we could come to some sort of uneasy alliance. What do we get out of it? 
Well, uh, it is a full moon out. Is that a threat? Mm, yeah, I would, I would say that is. <laughs> that is a threat. Um, I was trying to be all subtle-like about it, but uh, it seems that you've seen through my ruse. <laughs> well, I mean, a threat's not really a threat if you don't know it's a threat, so I'd say it's doing its job, but uh, here's a question for you. Why are you trying to be cured from being a werewolf? It's like being a human, but you get to do fun stuff on a new moon. No, full moon. The one where it's big. I mean, you could be doing fun stuff all the time. I meant supernaturally. Oh, right. Well, yeah, I can make that fun supernatural. Yeah, but you're a vampire. You always make everything fun supernatural. I do make everything fun. You're right. Big wink. (laughs) You ever thought about being double undead? Werewolf vampire? Make beautiful werewolf vampire babies? Now, hang on. Would that be a vamp wolf or a werepire? (laughs) <laughs> Werewolves are not part of our undead community. Oh, don't be so judgmental, Squishy. Stuck in the past. I shall judge who I want. I have the years on you. You have big ears on me? No, the years. Yeah, like, oh. I, I, I'm older than you. I'm, 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 an old, I'm old and I should be listened to. Yeah, uh, we know you're old, Squishy. Yeah, we know that. I am so old. <laughs> 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 um, Thank you for clarifying that, Squishy. <laughs> Choo Choo, having fainted <laughs> um, at the mention of the draining of the blood, has come round and is starving because hasn't eaten for a very long time. And d- I, I'm wondering if, if the, the nervous person of this group, it, to me, they sound like if they're nervous, maybe they're the weak one of the pack. And Choo Choo is trying to like sneak up behind them to just get a bite, basically. <gasps> Ooh. Hasn't been like has missed the entire discourse, and all Choo Choo can smell is the blood. And it's like, come on, I can do this. I'm so hungry. <laughs> all right, please give me a vampire roll. Oh no, <laughs> six. That's not good, is it? Unfortunately, the man turns around and is just like, "What are you doing? What? Get away from me!" You're in that full light sneak <laughs> yeah. pose with the light. <laughs> <laughs> and like the knee up in the air <laughs> in silhouette as well <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you just you just smell so good well, well thank thank you um, that's, that's mighty kind of you but uh, I get the feeling that it's in a more of a, a food way than in a friendly way have you heard anything that's going on do you know that we're trying to stop being werewolves and we need a vampire to drain their blood and all that stuff drain blood <laughs> gone <laughs> absolutely <laughs> gone amazing <laughs> the woman steps forward and says alright okay so since we are having this conversation I'm, we might as well introduce ourselves my name is Clarabelle Cranston this is my husband Andrew and the man with the little glasses proffers his hat and this is um, Jimmy Two Toes Bryant and the man with the goofy expression goes <laughs> <laughs> This is Miguel Santos, pointing at the man who Choo Choo just tried to <laughs> bite. And uh, finally, this is um, Kirsty McEwen. She is not fond of your kind at all, so any provocation and she will attack. The rest of us are more keen to come to things peacefully. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, and Gunbo is posed against a tree, cannot help but provoke. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, you've got an awful bunch of strange names. You know, we got Stringfellow over here, I'm Cigar, that's Squishy, we got Choo Choo, and of course, old Gumbo here, very strong vampire cowboy wow. name. Wow, Gumbo says, stretched against. Kirsty. Kirsty, that's just weird. Don't get it. Andrew. Andrew. Kirsty. I'm, I can't speak to the naming conventions of your community, but uh, where we come from, those are perfectly ordinary names. So, uh, well, I suppose that's one of those intractable cultural differences between vampires and werewolves. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So, uh, what is your decision? Are you going to help us, or are you going to face the wrath of a bunch of angry dogs on a full moon? I thought you were wolves. Yeah. If you're only dogs, then yeah, that's please easy. be my guest. I was, I was being metaphorical, like. Not, it wasn't a very good metaphor, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Gunbo, again, still posed against the tree, flicks out guns. Bagsy, a fight. 
Yeah, because my surname's Baggins. Yeah. Ah! yeah it's, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> now, Gumbo, that was that was extremely funny. Do you want to explain your surname to these good folks so they also get your excellent <laughs> Oh, yeah, that they may laugh so much it incapacitates them. <laughs> So, uh, my grandpappy <laughs> vampire. <laughs> and while they're distracted, I shall lunge. Oh, sure. <laughs> Ooh, what kind of attack are you going for? That will depend on whether you do a vampire roll or a cowboy roll. I am going to go for, to begin with, they're, they're werewolves, right? So we want to be at range. So I'm going to roll backwards off of the like little camp stool. So I say lunge, but actually I was lunging the opposite direction. <laughs> it's very, you know, that is why I always intended to do it. It was on purpose. Um, so I'm going to roll backwards and come up holding my six shooter and try to um, plug any of them um, in the head, aware that this might not stop them, but like slow them down at least. Fair enough. All right, give me a cowboy roll. If you think that you would either be prepared for this or an expert at this, then you can pitch to me that you get an extra 1d6 or 2d6. Oh, sure. I mean, uh, I would say that the the ruse with Gunbow's uh, distraction would count me as prepared. Nice. Yeah. All right. 2d6. Go for it. Okay. I rolled two fives, but that's good. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Yeah, because you want to you want to roll over your number. Fantastic. Do you have a particular preference for who you want to shoot? I would like to shoot Kirsty because she seemed the most murderous. Mm. All right. Yeah. You send out a shot from your from your pistol and it shoots right through her skull Ooh. and out the other side. <gasps> and she, unfortunately, because it is not a silver bullet, it does not kill her, but she is further enraged and starts to transform into a hulking, hairy, wolf-like humanoid creature with slavering jaws. Oh, beans. Juju is at the feet of the werewolves. She is now covered in blood. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and is just like trying to distract herself to stay awake, but also lick her face. <laughs> so kind of rocking and singing and like, oh, just uh, so hungry. Oh. I'm not going to be any help. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, it's very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Squishy is going to stand up. It's not that much of a difference because <laughs> they are they are very sort of small and crooked and they will say as the cowboys say hear ye and starts <laughs> <laughs> and uh, picks up some of the silver cutlery that we stole from the tray <gasps> yes! Yes! and uh, nice. starts trying to like throw silver knives at the various werewolves that's the wisdom of ages right mm-hmm. yes it incredible. is incredible yeah, since it is so wise and wisdomous, please make me a vampire roll. Oh, excellent. Oh, it's a five. No, but that is my number. That is your number. That is Vampire Cowboy. So you also get to ask me a question. Ooh. Truly on this night, you became the Vampire Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> the question I would like to ask is... What's a useful question to ask everyone? Are they telling the truth? Is there really a way to... That is a very good... Oh, yeah. Yes, that yeah. is the question. I would like to ask... Are they are they sincere? Are they actually telling the truth? Yes, they are. They are telling the truth. Oh, this does not move squishy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Which werewolf are you lobbing the cutlery at? The one, the one that's really angry that Ben just shot in the head. <laughs> nice. So Kirsty, yes, absolutely. The French one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the French, the, the incredibly French one. <laughs> you yeet this beautiful silver knife right into Kirsty's wolf like kind of shoulder you can tell that she is very wounded but it's going to take a couple more hits to get her fully down Choo Choo is very cowboy I've also just decided that uh, is quite a new vampire which is why they get so sick of blood they're just not used to it yet but since very very cowboy I would like to use my lasso powers to try and lasso Kirsty the dog to try and like bring her down to like neutralise the threat kind of thing. I've had a bit of blood now, so I'm like, okay, I'm feeling a little bit stronger. I just got to say, I really like describing things you're good at as your powers, like a cowboy has lasso powers. <laughs> <laughs> no, skills. Not skills, powers, yeah. I've got some writing powers. <laughs> I will say that you can roll an extra d6 on a cowboy roll for being an expert in lassos. Two fours. My number's two. For a cowboy, you want to roll over your number, so yeah, that Yay! is a success. Fantastic. All right. So, yeah, please describe to me how you incapacitate this ravening beast. (laughs) Choo Choo stands up, 
swings her lasso around her head and says, down girl, and just like gets it around her neck and tries to yank her down. Oh, does yank her down. Yeah, absolutely. And Kirsty the werewolf grasps at the rope around her neck and is yanked down to the ground and is stopped from doing any more damage for now. Uh, The other werewolves who have not yet transformed are looking incredibly wary, um, waiting to see if uh, anyone is going to attack them or if it is only the more aggressive of them that has incurred your ire. So Gunbo uh, finishes his story about <laughs> his, uh, how the name Baggins arose from a typo <laughs> when his ancestors arrived on Ellis Island and the person wrote it down. So it, it had been something much... like It was associated with royalty, you know, totally. Um, absolutely, it wasn't just made up. Yeah, as he finishes the story, realises that there is an incapacitated werewolf and goes, oh, well, gets the guns out. I was helping all along and <laughs> shoots the werewolf that's that's writhing around on the ground. I'm getting very upset at us attacking a dog. <laughs> no, it's not a dog. It's a horrible human. Just <laughs> wearing a dog costume. Okay, that helps. Thanks. Okay, give me a cowboy roll to see if you can uh, shoot this werewolf. And I think since you are a gunslinger, you can absolutely have an extra die for this. Yeah, I don't manage that. I roll a one and a three, and my my number is five. So it's just a chow chow in the air, <laughs> and it's like I totally <laughs> meant to do that, but am yeah. bam, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, one of the bullets hits directly through Stringfell or Dandy's fiddle. Oh, no! And no. he goes, oh, no, my one pride and joy in my whole life is gone. Oh, no! Stringy, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll get you a flute. Well, I guess that's the thought that counts. <laughs> is anyone else wanting to do something? So then we've got the werewolf on the ground. We've got the very wary humanoid werewolves looking around to see if anyone's going to do anything aggressive. Well, you can see that we're, uh, we all contributed very <laughs> much to successfully taking down your angry friend. So uh, I think if you're impressed with us, wink, wink, you should uh, <laughs> maybe not try and kill us and instead ha- like join the party. I don't know. Let's, let's have some fun. We could, we could rob a train together under, under the moonlight, just you and me. I, all of you and me and all of all of them. Because <laughs> I, I gotta be fair, your proposal was do this or we're gonna kill you. Which ain't the best proposal I ever heard. <laughs> so maybe you can find it in your hearts to offer us something for helping you out, especially since we could very easily dispatch your French friend. <laughs> yeah, that is a very good point, says Clarabelle. Uh, I, I see where you're coming from. Despite the fact that we are perceived as monsters by the outside world, I want to. I still want to be a reasonable person about this. So uh, how about, um, I have heard that in the town, there is a very wealthy gentleman. You mean he has a lot of blood? Well, I'm <laughs> sure he has a a certain amount of blood that allows him to survive, so I don't know. Okay. But, uh, a great big man, eight foot <laughs> tall and five foot wide, filled to the brim, <laughs> red as an ass. He's known as uh, Jedediah Fenton, and uh, he is known for mistreating his servants and his workers. He runs the local mine, and uh, everyone in it is worked to the bone and uh, not offered suitable payments, so... Uh, we are very against bad labor conditions, we are. That's that's why, in fact, we rob trains, not for <laughs> jewels to make us look fancy. <laughs> but ethics, yeah. <laughs> you like ethics? Ah, totally, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> And I got so many ethics. You want me to talk to you about all the ethics I learned about? (laughs) I'll explain them to you. That is a very kind (laughs) offer, but I was about to... Oh, yeah, I am very kind. Let me explain things to you. (laughs) Uh, I was about to say that uh, there's something in it for you would be if you took down this terrible man, A, you would be doing a good service to the town of Chapter, but also he's incredibly rich and... Because he's one of those paranoid rich types, he keeps all his wealth in his room, in his mansion. So you'd be able to, if you took him out, you'd be able to snaffle that all for yourself. We don't even need a cut. 
we're fine just doing after ourselves. Anything you steal from that mansion is yours. Right, so you're saying that we turn this Jedediah Fenton into a vampire, deliver him to you, you swiftly drain him of all of his juices. <laughs> give a look, give a look to Gumbo. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm sure he's very juicy. <laughs> <laughs> And then you'll be on your merry way and we get the contents of his uh, mansion of delights. Absolutely, that is an excellent summary. I mean, that seems reasonable. Yeah, that's that's basically, you know, you didn't even need to threaten us. You could have just given us a tip and yeah. then said, oh, well, as payment for this tip, this man that won't trouble our ethics and, and is rich also... Could you turn him into a vampire and leave him by our door? You know, like, just for future negotiations, you might want to start... It's a carrot-stick scenario, and while some of us do like sticks in certain kinds of contexts, it's often better to start with a carrot. That is a very good yes. point. Yes! Also, in other contexts. An excellent explanation of what a negotiation is. Anyway, gold? Yes, I'm in for the gold. To the horses, says Juju. Yeah, well, we might want to give them about a couple of hours for whatever's happening to them when we're off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, one of them uh, gave me this funny look and it has seemed to have like little spirals going round in its eyes and I was very confused what was going on there. Oh, yeah, that, that'll that be Jessica, my favourite horse. Jessica, that is a beautiful name for a horse. I that think it's a, a very really strange, strange name. name. <laughs> 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 but I thought that it suited a horse, you know? It's just... You want to name animals something unusual. Yeah, because if, uh, if you have a friend called Jessica, and you called, and you also have a horse called Jessica, and you called out Jessica, you wouldn't want to be like, oh, no, I meant the horse. I don't have any friends called Jessica. That's a very unusual name. Yeah, in your circle, it would be unusual <laughs> to have a friend called Jessica. It's a fine name. It's just very rare and unusual. That's why I called my horse Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We love to give him exotic and strange names. Very odd name. <laughs> good, good, all right. And so you gather your supplies for the trip into town, gather your horses, make sure that they're not tripping too much. <laughs> In every sense of the term. <laughs> Want to make sure that they're very sure-footed and also sober. <laughs> and not falling into yeah. the trenches that the fossil Yeah, guy not took. falling into <laughs> Professor Hiroshima's trenches. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. You set off with uh, your band of wary allies. Do the NPCs come with us? Or do, we, do, do they get left at the camp? Well, that is entirely up to you. If you want to bring them, then you can. But it's also, that's a lot of people to be infiltrating a mansion. <laughs> I really like the idea when the werewolves stepped out and went, we're werewolves, you're vampires. Like, none of our friends knew that we were vampires. And they were like, oh, my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious. Uh, we just thought yes, they were goths. they're not yeah. vampires. I just thought this was a wonderful community of good train robbers who were just minding their own <laughs> business. I had no idea they were blood-sucking fiends. We're just a bunch of really nocturnal criminals. <laughs> As we ride off into the distance, has everyone seen the video of Snoop Dogg commenting on dress art? No. That sounds amazing. Because... <laughs> no. That is exactly how I expect our horses to be <laughs> behaving. Like, both doing the dance, but also... He's like, this is incredible, I need to put this horse in a video. Snoop Dogg reacting to dressage is exactly what we look like as we ride off into the sun up. Well, hopefully yeah. not, because then we'll burst into flames. <laughs> yeah, we will burn immediately. Into the moon middle. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, as you set off towards the town of Chapter to investigate Jedediah Fenton's mansion, we shall end the episode there. So thank you so much for listening to the first episode of our Vampire Cowboys adventure. I would like to ask each of you, where can we find you on the internet and do you have anything you would like to plug? Starting with Lori. I am at Lori Tweets, which is a misnomer because I do not tweet ever. <laughs> <laughs> but I did get the handle and I'm keeping it. <laughs> nice. All right. And Helen. I am at Electo101. That is A L E C T O 101. And I don't have anything to plug apart from maybe my Rustic World podcast, which is called Enthusiasm and it's really fun. Nice. Um, it is indeed very, very fun. Uh, Lydia. Uh, yeah, I'm Lydia. You can find me on the Twitter at Lyd Nicholas, and you can find my chickens on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash urban chooks. Spelt with two O's. 
and two C's <laughs> and one K <laughs> and an S. Any order. <laughs> yeah, just see what happens. <laughs> and Ben, how about you? Yeah, I do stories of the brother every Sunday at twitch.tv forward slash the brothers Meredith. Fantastic. We hope to see you next time on Chapter and Multiverse, but until then, from all of us here in the space between worlds, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. goodbye. Bye. Chapter and Multiverse is a podcast distributed by Rusty Quill and licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. It is directed by Maddie Searle and produced by Natasha Johnston with executive producers Alexander J. Newell and April Sumner. The Eternal Tavern Keeper was played by Kareem Cronford. This episode was edited by Maddie Searle and Kathy Rinella with music by Nico Vatese. Thank you for listening. <laughs>